Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the India edition of our panel discussion on how to run hackathons like a pro. This is where we discuss everything you need to know about what they are, how they're done, and why you should really, really look into a hackathon right now. Well, as we were discussing just a little while ago, we've just come out or, you know, probably just starting to come out rather slowly from a rather difficult time, right? Literally no one would have anticipated that at the start of 2020, that the world will be equipped by COVID-19, the pandemic, right? And then social distancing will become the norm. Remote, work, remote working would be the next new normal. And even a panel discussion like we're having right now, right? It used to be a proper on-site event is now moved to completely remote or completely virtual. Everything looks either headed towards being remote first or remote only. And needless to say, hackathons are really no different, right? So for the uninitiated, uh, hackathons, it's, it's an event where like you know, either a person or a group of people come together and ideate, code, and build prototypes to solve real world problems that are plaguing a society or even problems that you as businesses will be facing on a regular basis. Now, normally these are like completely on-site events where there would be a bunch of folks all under one roof coding away, sprinting and ideating to find a solution. But we can't do that now, can we, right? Actually, no, we can, right? We absolutely can. What if I told you that hackathons can be done completely virtual? What if I told you hackathons are not limited to engaging early talent alone, but can be applied equally across all experience levels? What if I told you that hackathons, despite its scale, is as effortless to execute as perhaps maybe baking a cake, right? Use cases for hackathons are like many fold. And the idea behind this discussion is to help you guys understand how to run these hackathons effectively and the tangible business benefits that it can bring to the table. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce everyone to our panelists today. And as I introduce you guys, I, uh, I would request you to turn your mics back on and greet the audience as well. So first we have Sanjay Jambale, who is the VP and Head of Practice and Delivery at Zensa Technologies. Now, Sanjay brings 25 plus years of technology experience and has spent the last 13 plus years focused on the execution of large scale digital transformation initiatives for multiple global customers across industry verticals. Welcome, Sanjay. Thank you, Albert, and uh, good afternoon to all the participants. Uh, it's my pleasure to see in today's this uh, not so good times, uh, how really hackathons are going to help us to not only survive, but drive this kind of a technology services uh, for our global customers or global clients uh, in this kind of a technology world. Great. Next, we have Ankur Dasgupta, who is VP of Marketing at Entity Data. So Ankur brings in over two decades of rich experience in sales, marketing and communications, and has served as a visiting industry faculty member as well at various academic institutions. He actively participates in a lot of industry-led think tank groups and industry-led speaking engagements as well. Welcome, Ankur. Thank you, Alfred, and uh, hello to all my fellow panelists. And thank you all the participants who have joined. Uh, we thank you for your time. And indeed a very good topic uh, to talk about, especially when it comes to uh, engaging our, our employees to learn. You know, you can have fun at work and you can learn at work. This is perhaps one of those platforms where you get both. And uh, thanks to Hacker Earth uh, for being one of the you know, pioneers in this space. Uh, whom we have worked with. And I think there's a lot that we can learn from here. Welcome, Ankur. Uh, next, we have Trishala Jain, who is the Senior Product Marketing Manager of Azure at Microsoft. Trishala has been spearheading the breadth motion for developer audiences for the last two years at Microsoft. She has over 20 years of experience in marketing in the IT industry. And prior to this, she's worked in places like IBM India, where she's held various positions in multiple business units. And she also had a stint in KPIT before that as well. Welcome, Trishala. Hey, thanks, Alfred. Uh, a very good afternoon to all the participants who are here in the middle of your office hours to attend this uh, discussion. Um, we're, I'm actually looking forward to have an enriching discussion um, during this one hour. And um, to me, um, actually, this is a very, uh, in fact, um, very challenging time for all of us. And 
to me, it was quite challenging because I run the breadth motion for Microsoft for developers and we were doing all in-person events. And uh, when the pandemic hit, in fact, um, right even before the pandemic hit, we were thinking of going virtual on some of our engagement activities with developers, but uh, we were well prepared during the pandemic to handle um, everything on virtual and um, especially, you know, um, help uh, India developers to really get up to speed with the latest technology. This is the right um, platform uh, for developers to explore, learn, and get up, up to speed with latest technology. So uh, we've been working with Hacker Earth for quite some time now, and it's quite an exciting journey for us. And we've seen some amazing you know, um, uh, uh, results for the developers themselves. So let's, I'm actually looking forward to the enriching discussion. Thanks, thanks, Alfred. Great, Tishana, welcome on board. Uh, next, we have Subish Ram, who is the, uh, Director and Automation Leader at Ernst & Young. So Subish was involved in the setup and implementation of the entire automation team at the Global Delivery Services Wing of ENY. And he's played multiple leadership roles within the ENY, ENY GDS team prior to this as well. And I'm sure Subish's experience would definitely add a lot of value to this hack, uh, hackathon discussion. Welcome, Subish. Thank you, Alfred. And uh, hello to all the participants on the call and the panelists that we have here on the call as well. Very excited to be here and a very exciting topic. Looking forward to the discussion, talking about how hacking is solving our, our business problems. And especially in the current scenario, the disruption that we're going through, how technology is playing a major role. So very excited to be here, Alfred. Thank you. Excited to have you on board as well, Subish. And last but not the least, we have Shefi AK, who's the Senior Director of HR at UST Global. Now, Shefi's key area of responsibility at USD is business success enablement and HR operations at a global scale. He's been involved in a lot of external and internal hackathons conducted by USD at a national level, and I'm sure his experience conducting these hackathons would be a definite value add to this discussion. Welcome, Shefi. Yeah, thank you, Alfred. Uh, good afternoon, all of you, all participants and the panelists, and uh, uh, thank you, hackers, for uh, involving me in this discussion here today. And I'm really honored to be part of uh, such an August panel over here today. Thank you so much. Great, that's awesome. So as you can see, guys, we have a really, really exciting panel lined up for you today with really top-notch speakers as well. And I'm exciting and looking forward to this conversation. And, and before we start though, just a couple of things. I mean, there's a reason why we're doing the hackathon panel today, like some, some of our panelists have already highlighted. It's more imperative now than ever, especially given the current uh, circumstances outside. And we've also been getting a lot of requests, uh, thanks to our other webinar properties that we have saying we need to do one on hackathons. And here we are, we've heard you. And here's, here's the panel that we've kind of got lined up. And uh, before we jump into, the, uh, jump into the discussions, we have a quick poll uh, that we want to run. And I would appreciate it if you could all put in your responses to the poll. We will give it 30 seconds. And then I'll also be calling out the results of the poll at the end uh, of the 30 seconds. Okay, so we've ended our poll and quite a revealing uh, insight really. So from the audience today, around 53% of the folks have not conducted a hackathon before and around 47% have conducted a hackathon. So this panel discussion is for both sets of audiences really, right? So there's gonna be a lot of insights for folks who've already conducted hackathons uh, in terms of how you can take it to another level and for those who haven't conducted hackathons before, we've got everything you need to just get started, right? So thank you so much for participating in the poll and uh, without, without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so with that, let's get started. Uh, the first question that I have uh, to kickstart this conversation uh, is to Trishala actually, right? So Trishala, just, Quickly, why don't you kind of uh, tell the audience about how do you go about conducting a hackathon, right? Let's say you've had an idea to do a hackathon and you also got buy-in. How do you go about conducting one? So what are the things, what are some of the things that you need to keep in mind so that, you know, the hackathon can be executed successfully and it delivers results? Sure, absolutely. Um, thanks, thanks. So uh, as I said earlier, right? So we were doing a whole lot of in-person events earlier, including the hacks. The hacks used to be 
always, you know, offline, in person, it used to be overnight, developers used to, used to really get excited about it. Now, um, when the pandemic hit, we really wanted to, you know, engage with developers, larger audience. India is huge, has more than 3 million developer population. So how do you really, you know, reach out to them during the pandemic was a big question for us. And how do you really get them onto one platform? So before even, you know, uh, figuring how you're going to conduct, the main decision that you have to think about is the platform that you choose, right? Whether the, the platform supports you to do or rather meet all the objectives that you have for a hackathon. For instance, uh, the objective um, for us was to, you know, reach out to as many developers as possible and help them uh, discover some of the new tech uh, areas that they, they would love to explore. So um, having said that, platform decision is very important. And then second comes your tech team, right? Within your organization, you may have to have a lineup of uh, tech uh, SMEs who can help you with some of the insights on the latest and greatest technology uh, uh, that uh, you know you have to focus on. So how you're going to work on the problem statements and things like that. So the teams within your organization and of course the platform provider. And thirdly, I mean, of course, uh, uh, you know you have to um, keep the developers or the participants' interest in mind and. Uh, um, make their journey actually smooth to enter into this hackathon, be it registration to participation to actually getting engaged in the hackathon. So that journey is important to me. That is the most important area where you carve out the journey for an audience, uh, right from what are the resources that they need to, you know, use while hacking. What are some of who are some of the SMEs that they can go to to get guidance? You know, these are the things that are very, very important uh, when you really think of running a hack. Great, great. So the, the right platform, the right team, as well as like, you know, making sure that the participant experience is super smooth is what matters. That's that's excellent. That's excellent advice uh, for everyone, everyone who's listening in. Uh, I'd also like to uh, extend this question to Subish. Uh, Subish, like, uh, would you would you wish to add on to what Trishala mentioned? Or is there any alternative or anything else that you probably like to bring into the picture in terms of conducting a hackathon? Absolutely, Alfred. I think I think Trishala had some great points, right? In terms of how you set the platform and then you go about doing the whole hackathon. A uh, couple of additional thoughts that I had is uh, so you see we are, we are moving into a world where technology is just not one team's problem, right? It's just not you have a business problem, you throw it to a technology group, they're kind of trying to solve it. I think we've moved away from that and you're gonna see the whole industry moving farther and farther away from that concept of having a single technology team or an innovation team trying to solve your problem. So you're seeing a trend where you're seeing people, the whole citizen uh, developer, everyone getting their hands uh, kind of dirty with technology, right? Dirty may not be the right word, but getting their hands on with technology. So that is a very important shift that we are seeing in the industry. And Hackathon, I think, is uh, a very, very uh, useful lever for organizations to leverage, right? How do you get your business teams to come in, jump into the whole uh, scenario and try to solve these business problems using technology probably as an important lever. And at the same time, leverage an ecosystem, right? You have a talent pool, you have technology folks within the organization, but how do you go beyond that? How do you go into an ecosystem? How do you tap into the best of the hackers out there in the market, in the universities and in, in, in the, the whole hacking community? Some are professional hackers, some are gig workers who take hack part-time for fun. So how do you tap into all of those ecosystems to bring the best of both worlds together? I think that's another important element that I think uh, we kind of achieve through these hackathons. Interesting. So basically bringing the entire developer ecosystem together, right, is one of, the, one of the key things you need to look out for while doing a hackathon. That's 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 excellent advice. Uh, before we move on to the next question, now uh, this is the audience. In case you guys have any questions whatsoever, uh, feel free to kind of drop a question in the Q&A box below. Uh, we, we will have a full-fledged Q&A session right at the end uh, of the panel discussion. But uh, please do send in your questions. We will Someone from, from the team will be taking a look at them and we will definitely 
strive to answer all of those questions that you may have uh, at the end at the end of the event. All right, great. So that's that's excellent advice in terms of like some of the things that we really need to keep in mind uh, while going about doing a hackathon. But I would like to probably take one step back a little, right? So you've decided to do a hackathon, right? And uh, the one key challenge that folks may face at this point in time is actually getting stakeholder buy-in, right? So there's a, there's a business case that you guys have to absolutely make for hackathons to work. So how do you do that? How do you get that stakeholder buy-in to do your first hackathon? And I'd like to direct this question to Ankur first. Uh, so Ankur, if you may. Uh, very good question. Uh, actually, if you think about it, uh, stakeholder buy-in is also important because somewhere that also influences the budget that comes in for you. Um, for and I see Trishala smiles. So I think I've hit the right note there. But uh, you know why? Because I mean, I, I had marketing for my organization. Not necessarily I would run or uh, you know run programs. Everything that is funded through me. Stakeholder buy-in is important in in hackathons because I'll give you one example. Um, the last one that we conducted, uh, we wanted to have hackathon purely for the sake of engaging our employees. That's on one side. Um, the reason we wanted to engage our employees was for them uh, to feel how would it be if you have your own startup shop and you ran that for a couple of days and you came up with a solution. Uh, being part of, the, of a large organization, one of the pitfalls, especially today, is uh, and, and in a good way, is that many employees also kind of seek the thrill of running a startup or being part of a startup. Now, one way is for the organization, however big or small, is to be nimble enough that you behave like a startup uh, in your day-to-day -day activities. But part of running a hackathon can also be that you know you give them the the empowerment to create teams such that they create a team and they create it like a startup and they do an end-to-end -end hackathon. So you have that duration. The other was of course uh, you know again for buy-in purpose uh, we thought okay we go and we go and hire at campuses university campuses across India. What if we get those students to team up with our employees? form these virtual teams and then do it. So, you know, you also get the flavor of allowing some of uh, someone who's not yet hired into your organization to get a flavor of your culture of how things work and to attract them. Uh, and that uh, actually helps with the buy-in. So again, goes back to the first question that you asked is, you know, when you run a hackathon, the very first important thing is objective because objective really leads on to most of the buy-in that you need from the business or buying from your other executive sponsors. Got it. So do you think uh, like you know, defining this objective with respect to whatever uh, objectives your company has at large or tying that with the objectives your company has at large would really ease the entire process of stakeholder buying? Both. Um, it would be objectives and it would be desired outcomes. So anything Got that you do, you would have to really pin that again. So one of those, you know, six thinking hat um you know laws is to begin with the end in mind and if you do that you actually know it i have a set of objectives and here is what i expect as our minimum outcomes from this activity and and that's where it kind of convinces your internal audience or your stakeholders uh, because somewhere or the other like when i said budget and trishala smiled i think that is how you know that okay there are stakeholders who are willing to work with you and take this journey on with you and there are certain things they want to hear and they want to see covered part of your, you know, whatever you're doing. Got it. That's interesting. So I think a key takeaway here is actually like if you tie uh, the objectives, right, of your hackathon to common business objectives, the stakeholder buying process becomes a lot easier. Right? That's excellent. Uh, so, okay. So now that you've got buy-in and you've kind of decided to do a hackathon, the one question that's probably on everyone's mind is, how much dependency do you have on the technology teams to execute a hackathon, right? Uh, there's a lot of folks who've come back to me saying that, hey, I would really love to do one, but I don't think my technology team has any bandwidth. But do you really need technology teams or is there really a massive dependency on tech teams to execute them? Uh, I'd like to kind of throw this question open to Sanjay to begin with. Uh, Sanjay, if you can enlighten us on the role of tech teams actually in executing a hackathon. Sure. And uh, coming from a uh, background of, I think, a uh, services company, which has uh, studios, I mean, I say studios, design studios, experience studios, marketing studios globally, uh, we face this problem very often, Alfred, very, very, because as I think Ankur said about, talked about five thinking hats, right? 
the same thing we apply design thinking principles right now when we take a problem statement many of our associates or many of our leads are more of a solution thinkers who can bring the ideas or alternative ways or innovative ways to solve the problem but they may not have ability to go to the technology to actually build the solution because this is a they will have the kind of ideation solutioning because they are kind of a business thinkers on the other hand there may be very good coders or developers who know how to solve the problems but maybe they require some kind of a guidance to tell what to do and in today's world if you see now the uh, i will not call it digital now because digital has become common world in the current world of the new age of the digital what you want to call uh, everything is becoming like product engineering everything is like becoming like how you solve the problems through technology but i will say if we mix the technology with the business expertise to solve the problem that is the core important thing like uh, I, i'm not sure whether i'm talking too much here but double diamond theory what we do to solve find out the problem and then find out the solution is a conceptual level so many times we do the hackathon at that level to find really a conceptual solutions to the problems and then comes to the coding which is the core of the hackathon because that's what the technology comes into picture and that's what the depth is required uh, and then another challenge we can face is okay while technology is there there may be different types of technologies somebody may be doing in technology set microsoft based technology somebody may be doing java based somebody else may be doing some ready made kind of uh, platforms are there so which tool or technologies to use again becomes challenging so solution aspect irrespective of technology is important and even when it comes to technology which technologies we use again becomes kind of a varying factor in the hackathons got it got it right so it's basically like you know again identifying a problem and trying to solve it through code right and what solution and what technology is used to kind of solve that problem is what's important here as well right so do you say that there's a lot of dependency on the tech teams or like i said right can can these problems and solutions be actually sourced from a global developer pool so if you break the it's a very 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 excellent question i think a very practical question let me put in that way uh, if we put the hackathon problem at a very specific problem statement i think then definitely any technology stream can come together and solve that specific problem and that is where most of the hackathons are run right but if you get a problem little above at a business level then it becomes difficult for technology teams to solve so i think the challenge comes is the problem definition of hackathon and how we each of the technology teams can solve uh, and whether they have the right set of combinations right from the illustrating certain components of the solution while building the actual components of the solutions because when you have a complete end to end solution you may not be able to build everything within that much time period so you may illustrate certain part and you may build certain component to show it based on what technology you are prefer to do so that complete storytelling is very important and that perspective i think uh, having the technical knowledge uh, to demonstrate the practical feasibility is very critical excellent excellent and that's 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 good advice as well for everyone in terms of like you know uh, the kind of dependency that you have for uh, in terms of technology when doing a hackathon uh, so bish i may i may also want to kind of open this question out to you from uh, another services kind of perspective right so do you also have the same kind of dependency on technology teams for executing or and do you also kind of look at external talent pool versus external developer talent pool versus internal developer talent pool or do do or you do mix of both i i think alfred uh, the point there is uh, hackathon is all about collaboration right we we have to bring the whole ecosystem together like i said earlier right it's just not external it's the internal ecosystem also and again it depends on um how you want to take it from the point you're done with the hackathon for example if you are a business unit and uh, you need help from the technology division to help you implement the solution then of course you need to have them in the loop as you go along identifying the problem statement or articulating what your technology stack should be how do you go about building all of that as you open it out to the hackers you need to have your technology team along with you as partners right and depending on the organization you may have guidelines on technology information security data all of that right so business units we don't expect them to be aware of all of that so my my view and our experience running this is it's it's always better to collaborate with all the internal teams together go together as one unit and then so you're ready for it right it's just not the hackathon or the hacking itself you have a, a set of activities post the hackathon so keeping that in view i think it's 
the best approach is to take, to take the technology team together and work with them to come to the, the, the table. Got it. Got it. Great. So now we've, uh, until this point, we've established that, uh, like, you know, setting clear objectives is key for executing a hackathon as well as getting stakeholder buy in. Uh, we know that, you know, there is a good dependency on, on tech. Uh, in terms of being able to collaborate effectively with your tech teams so that you can bring solutions to life. Uh, now, there will also be certain challenges that's, that, that we tend to face while uh, conducting or executing a hackathon, right? So what are some of those common executional challenges that, that you may have faced? So Shefi, I'd like to direct this question to you. Uh, when it comes to conducting a hackathon, there will obviously be challenges, like I said. So what are some of the challenges that you faced and uh, what are the solutions that you've kind of brought onto the table to to kind of mitigate yeah. those challenges. Yeah, thank you, Alfred. Uh, so, so one of the biggest challenges was right whenever we open up something like this, uh, the, the same set of folks who go and apply for multiple hackathons happening in a world. So, what is the intention of uh, this hackathon? Is it to identify the right talent to get them onboarded? If that is the case, the, the challenges are going to be different. But it is just to build a brand value and to 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 uh, to take it to the university and you know, to give them an opportunity to give an experience of what happens in the corporate. Then it's a different uh, ball game altogether. But having said that, most of the companies do for the first one, right? Because they really want to build their uh, talent pipeline and uh, somewhere connect with the universities and brands. And then they take it to those kind of uh, institutions. So uh, you have to pitch, first of all, that which are those institutes where you want to open up this, which are those universities? Because it depends on the company. Because if maybe a, a company with a very with a, with a high brand value, right? If they go in to the top tier, they might They'll, they'll be able to do many conversions from there. Uh, but that's not going to be the same for every other company. So we need to pick the right universities, right colleges, the right trusts. The second piece is that uh, the challenges are how to pick those problem statements, right? Because today we, we don't have a generic uh, a hackathon. It's more a focused hackathon on special technology skills. And also we need to anticipate that what is the right technology that we are looking forward to prepare the problem statement accordingly. Uh, the third challenge would be shortlisting, right? You like you have a typically you have four to 5,000 people coming in. It's not practically possible to put them through the same uh, till the last mail uh, I mean, uh, solution. So there you have to do some shortlisting. You will have to do some filtering. You will have to identify. So that is where a platform like Hacker or any other platform is going to be handy. Where we have got technology solutions. We have multiple rounds of you know, uh, idea thons or uh, mini hackathons or things like that. Where you narrow down and come to the final list of people who will be actually going to this hackathon. Uh, the other piece we find, uh, figure out is that generally there's a, there's a tendency or expectation that once you clear the hackathon, when you're the finalist, you get an offer. But then these people, are they getting uh, in, tested for the soft skills or the values and things like this is some piece which is still missing in most of these platforms. So, uh, so that's one thing. Uh, the uh, the post hackathon the problem is that we do extend offer we expecting them to join but we we invariably we find that uh, uh, the people hold multiple offers from these hackathons right so now it's their choice whether they want to join so the conversion is uh, not as much as high so if you focus only on the winners uh, it's going to be difficult but you focus on the top uh, uh, I mean the the, the 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 last set of people who participate then it's probably we can have a much higher uh, conversion rate. Uh, that's with respect to the joining, and uh, and hackathon is not something which which works for every technology. Uh, it's an expensive option, uh, and but it cannot replace even the normal sourcing pipeline. That's uh, that's in the that's time tested and that's proven over the years. So uh, these are for some of the challenges or experience that I would like to share. Uh, you did bring up bring up an interesting point about choosing the right universities, yeah. uh, and like as one of the, as one of the challenges. So I, I will come back to that a little later. I do have a question that I want to throw open to the panel on uh, choosing the right universities. Uh, and in the meantime, yeah, of course, uh, one key component though uh, was in terms of the scale of participation, like you mentioned, right? There's going to be a lot of people participating. There's going to be a lot of solutions to evaluate. Uh, and finding a good way to kind of do that or an effective way to do that is always a challenge, but there is there has always been multiple solutions to that, which is another thing I will come to later as well uh, in, in this conversation. But in the meantime, uh, Trishala, I'd like to get your views on the same topic as well, right? On, in terms of some of the challenges that you've been facing, is there anything over and beyond what uh, Shefi mentioned or other unique challenges that you face and how did you overcome those? 
Yeah, I wouldn't say they're unique. Uh, almost uh, resonates well with what Shafi uh, highlighted. Um, I would say, you know, uh, since uh, I normally, uh, for the hacks that we run for developers, we normally focus on professional developers, uh, mainly because we want to empower the professional developers to start, um, you know, building innovative solutions in their respective organizations, help them upskill and then, you know, uh, grow personally uh, in their career. So uh, with having said that in mind, we do, uh, uh, you know, get a lot of uh, participation for our hacks because of the tech, because of the interest in Microsoft technology to learn and participate and the compete and the recognition factor that is built into it. So the large scale hacks evaluation gets uh, very tough. And that's where you guys are doing a fab job in doing the evaluation, helping us uh, evaluate the right set of uh, teams or the right set of developers who have really come up with some innovative solutions. And uh, another challenge that we face is we are limited with the resources, right? We have uh, in terms of manpower. And even if we do mentoring and where we organize SMEs to handhold the hackers to come up to speed with certain technology, it's really impossible for us uh, to reach each and every developer who is in need of help. So still there is a lot of scope to improve, to help each and every participant to give that super exciting experience. But uh, I think it still remains a challenge for us because of the manpower uh, you know, constraints that we have, plus also the constraint that the platform has, time constraints and things like that. So yeah. Got it, got it. So at one level, it's about certain constraints that uh, like now uh, we have from from a resource perspective, from a manpower perspective, etc. And at the other point, it's about evaluation again, a point that Sheffy Sheffy also brought up, right? So yeah, uh, there is something that I'm gonna probably bring up towards the end in terms of evaluation is gonna be a lot more smoother and easier. Uh, in terms of restrictions, of course, that is always a workaround, right? In terms of like you know how we overcome whatever uh, resource cuts we have to execute. A good hackathon right so moving on now we've spoken a lot about uh how do you conduct a hackathon how do you uh, how do you execute it what are the challenges that you have how do you get stakeholder buy-in uh one key component in here is how do you measure success right i mean everyone says okay we've done a hackathon we wanted to do it now what happens and how do you measure that success uh, I'd like to open this up to Subish first, uh, I mean, uh, in terms of like, you know, and get your opinion on what are the success metrics that you look for and or in general, how do you actually measure the success of a hackathon? Sure, I mean, there are many elements, right? Like like many of the points that we already spoken about, right from identifying the right business problem that you want to solve, having the right level of sponsorship, because it's just not about the problem and the solution to the problem. It's about how you take it from there, right? How do you uh, take the business problem? How do you hack? And how do you take that back into your ecosystem, into the business teams to be able to actually uh, bring it to life? So that's a, a crucial element. So identifying the problem, getting the business sponsor, having the right level of mentorship. You heard Trishala speak about how mentors play a crucial role. So you need to work through the the whole hacking process, working with the hackers. Hackers, if you're if you're leveraging the the hackers from an external ecosystem, they have no clue about your uh, organization. They have no clue about how things work, right? So how do you kind of help them through the whole hacking cycle? How do you make them understand what the business problem is? How do you give them more context around the business problem? So those are critical elements during the whole hacking cycle, right? And then you get to the D day where the your hacking is happening, how do you stay with them? How do you kind of keep the fun element also going through? It's, it's just not the, the business problems solving. It's a, there's fun into it, this collaboration, getting to know multiple people, the whole technology element of it. How do you bring multitude of technologies together? So there are all these elements that go together and then you hopefully get to some real good solutions and then the challenges. How do you pick the best from that, right? You may have multiple solutions. You literally may want to take all of that, but maybe it's not possible. You have to go in and zero in on one top solution. So that's the whole hacking cycle. From there, the next set of challenges start, which is how do you then loop it back into the business team to say, this is the problem that 
you had, you solved it using this technology. Now that's not the entire solution. If you see hacking is very focused approach to solving a particular problem. So you may have a, uh, a problem statement, which is really wide, but then you're, you're narrowing down to a very specific uh, problem and then solving that. And then you take it back into the larger solutioning itself, right? So there are all these elements involved. And that's why I said, it's very important to have uh, all the right teams involved right from the beginning, get them all to participate, engage with them and uh, keep it fun, right? There should be something exciting for all these teams to be involved. Uh, and you you work with someone like Hacker, they, they kind of create the environment for you to just come and leverage, right? It's like the SaaS model. You, you don't need to own anything, you leverage the platform, you just need to take care of your side of the business, uh, get the right problem statements, get the right sponsorship, and then open it out. And then like with, they say, you know, let the fun begin and then you, you get to the whole solution. I think all of those elements in varying uh, pockets, uh, Alfred is what I think is the answer to your question. Perfect, so it's about everything coming together, right? I mean, in terms of solution, in terms of even the experience of it all, right? just having fun doing Absolutely. that. I know, I know a lot excellent. of business teams who, who participate in it just for the experience of it, right? We want to come in and see what Hackathon is about. And once they get to it, they figure out that, wow, instead of one solution that my technology team might have given, I have three now, and I get to choose the best from that. So, I mean, different teams come in for different purposes, but end of the day, I think we try to keep the fun element going for all the teams going, participating, and then they feel good about it. Got it, got it. So that that everything coming together, the whole experience is success in itself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, all right, now, just just so that uh, I kind of like, you know, circle back to different use case. So Sheffi, you did mention that, you know, you uh, use hackathons primarily a, a lot from a sourcing perspective, right? So how would success defined for you uh, in terms of like, you know, running a hackathon? Is it in terms of you getting the right candidates into the funnel or is it, is it employer branding is, or is it something else altogether? Yeah, so of course, employee branding is an important element. But then, uh, since we are talking about the freshers or the external hackathon specifically, uh, I would say the metrics would be what is the participation rate, uh, what is the uh, what's the volume of ideas that has been generated uh, through this process, uh, and how uh, what has been the conversion subsequently when when we extended the offers, and these are some of the key metrics from the uh, talent perspective that I would like to. Pitch. Got it. Got it. Great. So yeah, success metrics might vary, uh, but uh, I think like you know from from what Chef P said and and what uh, 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 Subish as well mentioned, I think if you get a clear idea of how hackathons can be measured in terms of like you know, how successful it is. Uh, now, moving away from execution as well as measuring results, right? I want to kind of go to a, a, a somewhat of a bigger picture here, right? So one of the things that we at Hackerit believe is that hackathons play an absolutely crucial role in establishing an innovation culture within the organization, right? It's important, it's, an, it's a very important component if you wanna have an innovation first approach to your own organization culture. So I, I wanted to open this question now to Ankur at first and hear your thoughts and then I'll probably like you know, look in others as well. So, so good question and kind of a very relevant question for us at NTG Data. Uh, we call ourselves global IT innovators. Um, it's sort of there in our mission statement. Um, it is what defines us. And then when we when we want to uh, you know talk about the culture of innovation, and, and I'll also kind of answer one of the questions um, that I see from one of the attendees. Um, it, it will be partly answered by that. The idea of uh, making sure you nurture innovation is not only by asking each of you know your technical teams um, to work on latest technologies and to make sure that you know you are part of whatever is trending it is also important that you look at the industry at large uh, you look at the entire ecosystem and uh, some of the great ideas some of the great approaches actually could come from outside it come could come from outside it could come from collaboration so keeping that door uh, to the external world is pretty pretty important um, Within uh, entity data, we uh, I'll give you examples of uh, you know two activities we do and to what someone said. Why do we call hackathon? So one of the events that we do is called Open Innovation Contest, where uh, we do it only for startups across the world, and uh, we ask our clients to give us problem statements. Uh, 
um, these problem statements are to be answered um, or, or are to be kind of defined and these startups come and make a pitch to show us how much are their products or services relevantly solving some of these questions that our clients are giving. So when it comes to you know getting stakeholder um, approvals or getting stakeholders engaged, pretty easy because it's their clients uh, who's you know who's real life problems, real world problems, are something that we open up to startups in the industry. Uh, we take this through several stages, and then you have a select group of starters, startups who are literally uh, showcasing their products, who have worked with our clients for a couple of months. And the price at the end is very sweet. It's not the hundred thousand dollars that we give to the top person. Like there's not one winner, so the one winner gets a lot of money. But there are also others who are actually exposed to real life client projects, and we actually take the startups to the next level. So it's not you know they get that that way to work. Um, and then back to hackathon. If we are working on hackathon, and if we are working with uh, you know students from different industries. If we uh, from different colleges, if we are working with our own employees uh, who are, let's say someone is very technical in nature, um, someone is not at all technical, someone is from a service or, or a consulting background, the idea is that you team up. The idea of calling a hackathon, a hackathon is, a hack is nothing but, you know, jugad in English. Uh, a hack is, you know, a way of doing things differently. Now, for that, somebody coined up the word hackathon and we stuck to it. But that doesn't mean that you are limiting it to only tech SMEs. Uh, you actually form teams. In that team, you tell people that, okay, there is the best of minds in the organization. Some could be technical. Not necessarily that everyone is technical. Think of any good project that you know any of our offices where, where we are doing. We don't have everyone who's sitting and coding. You have folks who go and gather requirements. You have folks who kind of analyze what is there. You have folks who are testing on it. You have folks who are actually writing use cases on how should that uh, you know solution look like. So there you have your five different kind of people uh, who are in one project itself, and that's what makes the beauty of hackathon really sweet because you get to engage a large number of team members, and you also give the same flavor to your students if you're working with student communities. And also to clients because they see the sort of innovation culture that you are pushing and that you are kind of igniting across the academia, um, you know, community, across startup communities, and across anyone whom you touch through these uh, these hackathons that you run. That's interesting. I mean, if if you think about the whole ecosystem here, right? You spoke about spoke about it at three levels, right? One from an internal level itself, right? I mean, it's not just about the tech teams; it's about uh, like you know, bringing everyone together, right? I mean, it's in, at the end of the day, when for an idea to come to life, you don't just have tech coding, it, right? You have everybody else coming in and bringing that idea to life or designing that idea to begin with, right? That's one level. At the second level, you have your communities, like you mentioned, right? Your student communities and external developer communities, right? Fostering a culture of innovation, not just within, but also from uh, like you know, within those communities. And at the third level, you also have your customers in there. If you think about it, right? You're saying, okay, now customers also love to, love to believe that or love to see the fact that, you know, we have a, a culture of innovation within the company. And also we could use a hackathon to solve customer challenges as well on, on uh, uh, like you know, whatever real life customer challenges you guys are facing. You could always spin out a hackathon internally to solve those problems as well. So at three different levels, it's, it seems like a very complete picture to me in terms of how you foster innovation. Right within the company, and that's that's excellent advice to everyone who's listening in as well. I mean, if you manage these three stakeholders extremely well and foster and tailor your hackathon so as that you will uh, foster a culture of innovation within your organization as well. Now, on the same note, I'd like to get Sanjay's viewpoint as well uh, from from Zensa's perspective, perhaps. Like, how do you how do you see hackathons playing that role of seeding the culture of innovation within organizations? Sure, and I think. It's a very, very valid question. I think Ankur, you touched it uh, very, very nicely. Uh, so those are the days, I think few years back, uh, hackathons were considered more like a talent acquisition kind of a criteria maybe. There are no more, that is definitely one of the criteria maybe, but they are come to the mainstream. Uh, when I say mainstream, how we deliver services to the customers. So take example, when we are running any program or project through agile execution, what we do, we start with design thinking. We start with what are the possible solutions. 
what are the alternative solutions as ankur said one solution may not fit we need to find alternative solutions and find out fail fast we may be failing in some of the cycles like in agile we'll try something and we'll fail and we'll stop that and we'll try something new and that has become the real practical scenario for innovative solution implementation and not only innovative even for any transformation program we call mvp suppose most viable product right so to develop that we go through the iterations of fail and try and quick try so hackathons change us a culture it's a culture of speedly how at speed how at agility how at a innovative way you bring new solution to the table not just keep talking around it you try to give some picture and outcome in a faster manner on a table and show that outcome to the business user and this has become normal practice in any project education nowadays that's the reason we call high velocity engineering in fact that's a group my head into it's really the high velocity engineering has become common practice so hackathon the way we build that culture at the start has become the actual execution methodology how at the speed innovation agility bringing together and solving the problem in a best possible way right from the business consultant to the technical teams to the uh, testing team and all and bringing that solution so hackathon i think it's might have started as a more to judge the talent where the talent is there but now it has become the actual solving the customer problems at innovation level as well as it becomes the early stage implementation of a larger transformation program when mvps are defined they're done exactly accordingly and once those are defined maybe we can put a production team to do and multiply it and make it little bigger but i think this has gone lot ahead in industry and become as a mainstream solution for all the industries it's not about just software product companies i'm sure trishala and all they may be living day in day out with that but i'm talking about every customer every customer you take bank insurance company retailer any customer in the industry wants to run with this culture so i really appreciate the way the hackathon culture has started and it is must for all it is must for all and i think that is the mega change that happened in industry according to me right and that is that's actually very interesting point and, and an excellent one at that right it's there is this perception uh, sanjay that i i may have to kind of like you know uh, say right that uh, hackathons are for tech companies hackathons are for product companies alone right Uh, and i think uh, the audience can all agree in unison uh, like you know after what ankur and sanjay has said that that's not exactly the case right it's for everyone right you foster you foster this culture of innovation uh, within your organization you foster this culture of speed right with sanjay was talking about and that that's a good use case as well i mean a lot of folks who we work with right now are using hackathons for rapid prototyping right get into a, get into a 24 hour hackathon and come up with quick solutions for any real world problem that you're facing or anything that a customer is facing right now and that's been working out pretty successfully that's again improving the speed and agility as an organization as well as of course like fostering that uh, culture of innovation uh, excellent points uh, thank you both for that that that, that was really was really excellent and i learned something there as well all right uh, so at this point i'd like to take a quick pause and uh, run another poll right So, guys, there's another poll coming your way, and uh, I'm going to keep it open for 30 to 35 seconds. So, please go ahead and fill in your answers, and then I'll share the results at the end of it. And so, here's the results. Well, uh, it looks like the majority uh, of the audience agrees to the fact that hackathons are not just for one single use case alone, right? Hackathons fit into a lot of buckets, right? Whether you want to go the hiring way. that's lateral or campus whether you want to use it for talent branding product evangelism in, internal engagement we're going to be touching upon a couple of these points as well uh, as the conversation moves along but it's interesting to note that the majority of the audience thinks that all of this is possible right and i'd like to end uh, saying that you know it's not just these things that you see on the screen there's a lot more that hackathons can actually bring to the table right some of which we will uncover going forward thank you all for participating in the poll and this uh while uh like you know, interesting it was pretty much it, it was an interesting uh poll and i think this answer the results were also quite interesting all right okay so keeping in my keeping in the theme of uh, like you know, the poll that we just had just now right i want to kind of touch upon certain use cases so as to say right and i'm going to start with i think probably one of the most obvious use cases 
that uh, folks have associated hackathons with, and that's employer branding, right? Uh, you do want to put, portray yourself as being a top tech employer, you do a hackathon. This was something that was doing the rounds in 2018 when anybody who said, I want to be a, uh, I want to boost my employer branding, uh, all I'm going to do is run a hackathon. Is that still the case today? And what are, how, how do you describe the impact of hackathons for talent branding? And I'd like to open this question up first to Subish, if I may, right, uh, from a talent, talent branding perspective. Uh, so how do you use hackathons for talent branding? What are your takeaways and how would you describe the actual tangible impact that hackathons from a talent branding perspective has had? I think that's a great point, um, Alfred. See, the, the whole uh, concept around it is, is the ability that uh, hackathons uh, provide for us to tap into multitude of talent channels, if I may call it that way, right? Be it the, the universities, the, the gig workers, or the professionals who are employed and do hacking part-time or for fun, right? So you're kind of exposed to a variety of talent and it's a very exciting combination, right? And uh, while you have a great talent pool in-house in your organization, you also have this ability to tap into the external talent channels that I was talking about. So when you bring these two together uh, for a short span of time, what, what are you trying to achieve, right? Uh, short span of time, high intensity, very exciting uh, combination. And you're kind of solving uh, business problems, right? Again business problems with sponsorship, business problems that is uh, top uh, of the line for the business units, right? So you have some very interesting business problems. You have some very exciting talent out there and you bring this all together and you are solving unique business problems using unique combination of uh, technology and people. So that I think is the, the biggest uh, branding, if I may say, right? That is the opportunity that we create. That's the platform that, that we create. And uh, that's the ecosystem that we create for people to be able to come together, to to experiment, to learn, to kind of test out a few things in an environment where we are keeping it without any constraints, right? You're, you're opening it out literally to say, go there, give it your shot, try and solve this, right? And uh, that I think is the excitement for the, the people, the, the talent part of it. And that I think is the branding part. Got it, got it. So, so technically the whole opportunity and the experience itself kind of contributes more to the branding uh, than, than just having a hackathon, right? Absolutely. Got it, interesting. And uh, so I'd like to also kind of like, you know, get uh, the, the, the opinion of uh, Ankur on this, this particular question as well in terms of talent branding. So um, to add to what uh, Subhish said, I think one of the areas we need to be, it's, it's the other way around actually, and um, to be thought in the negative way is it's more important to make sure that things don't go wrong because that indeed hits your brand. Uh, whatever you are doing right, uh, you would almost take it for granted that everybody would expect you to do right because hackathons are is a tool that has been used by almost everybody in the industry today. Uh, the moment you do something that's very different, you've got to be very careful. You've got to be uh, ready to make sure that, you know, things that are happening for the first time is well thought of. Um, the architecture or the plan of putting that together is well thought of so that nothing goes wrong. In terms of uh, employer branding, I think Hackathon definitely is one of the tools. Um, if I think of what we do at Entity Data, um, you know, we have our own innovation fund. Like I said, you know, we are a global IT innovator um, and that's $3.6 billion, not million, a billion dollars put into innovation alone. And that's an internal funding. But does that mean that, you know, everybody across the world is going to say that, you know, you're going, you're doing a lot of things that are, uh, you know, brand specific and brand special. It may not, it may not really attract that kind of audience unless you engage each of them um, in their own way. And, and for hackathon, for talent branding, that's a great place to go to because uh, you know talent coming in will be able to see the richness and vastness of tech um, and opportunities that are being uh, employed at for that event alone. And if they make it through the different levels and they actually get, let's say in the finals, they get to participate and meet the judges who usually are uh, you know some of the top uh, tech folks and top business folks in the organization, that conversation alone and the word of mouth that spreads after that 
uh, tells that particular university institution that they had a great experience at, at a certain you know organization and that is your success factor uh, that is how you would also you know make sure that things go right when it comes to branding got it got it so again it's a mix of experience plus also a very important point that you brought out ensuring nothing goes wrong right like i said it it uh, negative then again you've practically undone all the reasons why you've wanted to do this in the first place that's that's actually interesting as well because uh, uh, but i haven't really seen a lot of examples of uh, like you know where this can go wrong usually it has practically minimal to none but it's equally important to ensure that you know we do it right right like you know we do it first time right perhaps uh, all right that that's great uh, i want to move on to another use case so to say of uh, for, for hackathons, right? And this this probably isn't something that uh, is on top of the mind of anyone in the audience, perhaps, when you talk about hackathons, but product evangelism, using hackathons for product evangelism. Like, how do you do that? I mean, how do you kind of ensure that hackathons become a basis for you to go out there and evangelize the product? And I'd like to open this out to Trishala first. Uh, I want and, and to get your views on how hackathons can be used for product evangelism and like, how do you describe the business impact? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> it's a good question. So, yeah, all the hackathons that I run um, are product evangelism focused hackathon. But um, uh, as part of this journey, our objective is aligned to our mission statement, right? So, our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. So as a developer relations marketeer, my uh, every developer in India to achieve more. So with this being the main objective, uh, it has really helped um, us to, you know, uh, really create that awareness about the new age tech that the developers can learn and experiment and make their hand dirty and use some of the coolest tools and technology and build uh, fantastic solutions and solve some of the greatest problems. So various hacks that we have run so far, I think we've run about, um, I don't remember how many, but uh, during the pandemic, we really ran some excellent hacks focusing on solving the COVID problems, the healthcare industry, the uh, problems that were prevailing in um, uh, education industry or be it any industry for that matter, right? So we got some great ideas coming uh, from various teams, from various developers, nook and corner of the, uh, you know, um, India. So we are really able to create that awareness that, yeah, you know, these are some of the technology that you can use to build that innovative solutions and solve some of the real big problems that we are facing at the moment. So more than project, I would say product evangelism, I would say it's more to do with helping, empowering developers to get up to speed with the emerging technology. And uh, that we do it by introducing them on various services that we have on our Azure. You know, we have seen like um, all from all our hacks, we've seen developers spinning more than 20, 30 services in some instances. And uh, we've got some great traction in terms of uh, developers giving feedback. Like, I didn't know that there are quite a few services around IoT on Azure, and this has helped me to ramp up my project internally and thereby has helped my organization. So this, this really helps us to meet our objective and the mission statement that I uh, you know, initially explained. It really helps us you know, uh, be in the forefront, uh, help, developers, empower developers, and help uh, entire India to get onto the latest technology and build on some of the latest technology and innovate thereby. That's that's interesting. I mean, I like that mission statement, by the way. I mean, empowering uh, developers to adopt new technology in, in the sense that, you know, what's going to happen as a result of that is you're pushing innovation forward, right? Yeah. So you try to drive innovation in India forward through these initiatives, right? Which is, which is, which is excellent. Uh, and, and it's and it's good to, good to see uh, good to see like you know that uh, like Microsoft is really invested in in kind of like you know doing this and that's that's excellent. Uh, 
Right. So back to product evangelism again. So Sanjay, do you have uh, do you have any additional thoughts to add on to it? Uh, so, uh, uh, Alfred, uh, thanks for that. I think Trishal has covered with that mission statement everything. I think, uh, but let me just add. I think uh, uh, just to same point. I think earlier we discussed, but maybe more deeper. The product engineering or product evangelism is required for every company, every industry. Like suppose every retailer wants to become something like Amazon. Every retailer wants to become, or every bank or financial institution wants to become fintech. Insurance company wants to become insurtech. So everybody is trying to aim as a product company in their field. And while the Microsofts of the product companies will help to build that, give that platform, but getting using those platforms for which are verticalized for those industries are very critical. So I will just add to what Trishala you talked about every Indian mission of getting that, enabling that. I will say that next wave of Indian IT, I'm talking about Indian IT to make a difference in world is how we do the product engineering approach for every industry to solve the problem. That's a very different mind share and good that this all software product companies have got that talent and mind share to us and hackathon kind of programs, what you are running daily basically helps us to build that culture. If you just marry these two things, I think we are in a mega, mega transformation journey of next IT innovation of IT industry. I will talk from India point of view to make the difference for all verticals, all geographies. I think that mission statement that's the reason very powerful is that if you really think in those terms and do the product evangelism and bring this concept of culture of hackathon, I think that's going to be game changing in future. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so uh, I've just been told that, you know, we are running a little over on time. I know we've got another 20 minutes, so I'm gonna keep it to another couple of questions, Max, and then we will open it up to the audience uh, for Q&A, right? Uh, one question in particular that I've been meaning to ask is, this, this is directed uh, solely to Sheffy, right? So basically this is in, with respect to campus hiring, right? You did mention that, uh, initially you did mention a point on choosing the right campuses is important. And you also mentioned the fact that, you know, you very actively use hackathons for uh, sourcing. So how do you, how do you go about doing that, right? In terms of like, you know, making sure you choose the right camp campus or do you even want to choose campuses at all, right? Uh, the other option is to actually leave it open to uh, practically every university in India and say like, you know, who comes up with the best solution irrespective of whether they're a tier one university or a tier two university. So what are your viewpoints on hackathons for, from a campus perspective? Yeah, so here there is a bit of conflict, right? What used to work maybe a year back may not work today in this current situation. The whole ecosystem has changed. And so that being the case, uh, when you look at the campus, uh, uh, one option is like, you no, know, you, you, you have historical data, just go and figure out from there, which are those uh, universities which has been successful where we have been able to have a high degree of uh, retention uh, and uh, how they have been performing once they come and how they have, uh, they've been, they have been successful with the client uh, and things like that, right? So uh, primarily these are some of those inputs we would take, but I think this is more gonna be a more of a localized thing in some states and uh, in, maybe it's different in the in metro and uh, so I, mean, I, I don't think I can I can just uh, talk about a one solution for it we every company has to figure out what is the best uh, way to know uh, manage this particular uh, element of importality uh, but having said that uh, we do have options like if you have, if you know these campuses we can go ahead and do some road shows we have connect with their alumni we have connect with their campus placement teams and things like that and uh, they also come and support and uh, and there are there are certain business uh, uh, functions who specifically ask for certain campuses based on their experience in the past so these are some of these inputs and insights that we utilize when we reach out to the campuses for this so you basically also take uh, inputs from the rest of the teams, uh, uh, the technology team in terms of like, you know, which campus you need to really uh, look out for, right? Absolutely. We do have people coming back and access specifically for, uh, uh, I mean, uh, candidates from the specific universities. Got it. Got it. Great. Uh, now, last question of the day, right? And I think this is actually turning into one of the most common use cases of hackathons today. I mean, we've been handling hackathons for a long time now, right? And uh, ever since the pandemic started, we've seen demand for this particular type of hackathon go through the roof, right? I'm talking about internal engagement hackathons. I mean, if you think about it, 
we've been gripped by a pandemic, everyone's working remotely. Uh, you probably have offices located in multiple parts of the world. How do you bring them all together? And, and the answer that a lot of folks had in mind was to have an internal engagement hackathon. Now, I want to kind of open it up to the panel as well, starting with you, Ankur, right, on hackathons for internal engagement. Like, have, has this been the answer to kind of connecting your global workforce, not just tech workforce, right? And, and I want to kind of like to reiterate the fact that this a hackathon does not involve tech alone, tech teams alone, it involves everyone, right? So has this kind of helped in bringing your entire workforce together, right, to some extent? Um, so honestly, um, if I were to think of the last one year and uh, trying to think how much, you know, has hackathon helped, I would say during the initial parts of the uh, pandemic, there was a lot of uh, engagement that we saw coming in from all sectors uh, of our employee population. Um, in a year, I think one of the things that we have realized is that there is a very high degree of online fatigue. Um, when there is a high degree of online fatigue, people are more interested in sticking to what they're doing well, um, their jobs, they're doing that. Um, and then they look at engagements that are that yield learning to them, or you know there is some, some rewards and recognition attached to that. So if we are able to you know, tie our hackathons to that, certainly yes, um, that is going to be helpful and that, is, that has helped um, you know, getting and garner more support for running such hackathons. Um, it has been uh, difficult, if I would say, is the moment you want to go externally and you want to go out to like you know, right now, so we said, going uh, to, your, um, to your employee, uh, to your uh, student population and to look at them and to figure out, you know, where are they really? I mean, until last a year ago, you knew, you knew that an institute in Hyderabad had the students in Hyderabad. Today, you don't know where are these students and, and you know, uh, where they are, which city are they working from? Are, are they uh, joining the classes online? And to them, um, you know, hackathon again becomes a challenge. So probably the trick uh, that I would say is how do we further simplify the, uh, the, the, you know, how we conduct hackathons? How do we look at a very robust platform um, that organizations like Hacker Earth provide so that you keep everyone in one platform and take them through the entire journey together. And that probably becomes a good success factor because that ensures that, you know, you don't lose out folks uh, not being able to participate. Absolutely. Right. It's about widening your pool as well, right, if you think about it. And uh, I think beyond, so this is going beyond internal engagement, if you think about it, right, based on what you said, it's internal engagement is just one part, right? But yeah, you're right, Zoom fatigue is something that, you know, we've been, uh, interview meeting fatigue is something that, you know, we've been hearing all too often these days, right? Uh, and uh, there's, there's opportunities for people to, people to actually break out of that, I think, through hackathons as well. And even when you have internal even when you have hackathons virtually done to expand to your external talent but like you said we don't know if uh and i as someone from an iit kgp is an iit kgp right now that's right could be some in which are part of india right? uh, so connecting broadening a talent pool and connecting is important that's 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 an excellent point and and uh, i want to kind of extend this question to subish as well uh, in terms of, from a pure play internal engagement perspective, like uh, I mean, from an ENY perspective, uh, you you have a very diverse workforce, right? I mean, you have work, you have folks scattered all over the country, perhaps, or even all over the world, right? So, how do you ensure that you know? Uh, so, have you tried hackathons to kind of bring people together? And if so, what degree of success have you seen? And uh, what other points you have in terms of conducting hackathons for internal engagement alone? I, th I think we should take a few steps back, uh, Alfred, right? With the pandemic, you see every organization is trying to explore every single uh, avenue, right? Every single possibility of increasing employee engagement, right? 100% uh, virtual workforce, uh, everyone, as Anku said, is dispersed across the globe. You don't know where your team is today, right? Especially all the new guys that are joining the last year, not even met them. They've not been to an office, proper office. So. You don't know these people, you've not met them, you've not engaged with them, you've not literally uh, onboarded them in, in, in a typical, the old way of onboarding, right? you may call it that way. So uh, going back to the point, every organization is looking to increase their employee engagement activities. And uh, with a diverse workforce, Hackathon, I think is, I'm not saying that's the only avenue, but that's a very important lever or important uh, method for us to bring 
multiple teams together, a collaboration avenue, as I said earlier, right? You have the tech workforce, you have uh, business teams having problems to solve, you have the whole ecosystem out there, which we all know organizations today realize and know it more than ever that you can't solve all your problems yourself. You need to leverage an ecosystem. You need to go out into the market to figure out who can solve your problems rather than trying to do all of that yourself. So I think it's a great avenue to bring all of this together in the current uh, scenario, right? As we go through this disruption and as it seems to be a long drawn out one, we're not seeing the, as we said in the beginning, right? We're not seeing the end yet, right? We are probably halfway through the whole pandemic. So. It's a great avenue to increase employee engagement, get everyone to come in, participate, leverage an external uh, ecosystem, all of that coming together. I think that's been the, the added advantage of, of hackathons and how we're kind of able to leverage and tap into this whole uh, system. So that's my view and that's what EY has done. We have, if you see, we have done three hackathons this year. We've been trying to do one every quarter, going out to the business teams, figuring out what are your top business problems, how do you want to solve them? And then we ask them to come in and be part of the whole hackathon. It's just not that they give us the business problem and then sit back and relax. They're part of the whole hackathon exercise. They're engaged with the hackers. They're walking them through the whole business problem. And then they're in fact in the presentation when the hackers do the whole, uh, you know, showcasing of the solutions the business problem owners are the ones who take the lead and talk about the problem and then we invite the hackers to come in and uh, talk to us about how they solved it so i think it is uh, a melting pot of all these different teams coming together to solve what is uh, a critical business problem that's how we we've been trying to take it got it got it all right okay cool so uh, i think that kind of brings us to the end of the discussion and uh, before we move on to q and just wanted to add one quick point. Uh, so far, I mean, I think there's one myth we've absolutely broken though today. Uh, like I said, I think I've mentioned this in the beginning of the conversation that there's a perception that hackathons are only for tech. That myth is completely busted. There's a perception that hackathons uh, have just one uh, solution to attach to it. Basically that's to either source talent or to, for an employer branding perspective. And I think we've kind of like you know, blew that out the window as well, right? I, I think we've lost count of the number of solutions we've discussed within this conversation itself, starting from internal engagement to product adoption, to product evangelism, to campus hiring, to lateral hiring. There's, there's a lot of stuff to be discussed in this conversation itself that kind of blows that out of the water, right? So my uh, one uh, advice to the audience is uh, it, it, especially folks who've been doing a hackathon, there's a lot more that, that can be achieved. And I think this particular panel discussion, we've uncovered a lot of different use cases to for you to experiment or for you to try out to solve real world challenges, to to foster innovation, et cetera, right? So that's great. Uh, thanks, thanks folks. Thank you, thanks one and all. So let's move directly into uh, the Q&A. So what I would want uh, uh, the panelists to do is uh, choose the questions that you want to answer. I think it's open for everyone to see. And uh, I'm going to probably answer a couple of questions that were asked about the platform. So I think Mark, uh, Mark Kingston had asked a question on what platform would you suggest to use to run an online international hackathon where entrants can code in their own time across a competition period of about a month? Uh, well, hacker it. <laughs> Right. It's, it's a simple answer for me to say, right? So we will, uh, so Mark, we'll definitely help you do that. If you can, if you want to reach out to us, you can drop drop a note to someone over at Hacker Earth and we'll be in a position to kind of help you do exactly what you would, you've asked, right? So, and I hope that answers your question. <laughs> uh, all right, so one of the questions that uh, I'm seeing here, uh, like instead of universities, can we restrict candidates on basis of location because uh, freshers, newbies, college, uh, freshers and newbies instead of college or universities are much better and innovative, right? So yeah, Ankur, you wanted to answer that question. Yeah, the reason I, I picked that uh, question was that uh, there's a bit of assumption over there. Um, and if you assume that you're right, you know, you can restrict um, candidates on bas basis of location. But right now with the current pandemic ongoing, and I'm one who firmly believes that we do not, we haven't seen the tail, the end of, you know, how this is going to go through. So I would assume that, you know, what life is today is what life is going to be for some time at least in future. And if that is so, then I think virtual is what it is. 
if it is virtual i would say think of it in the other way around uh, instead of restricting think how you can really blow this uh, you know out of proportion by involving your global audience because here is your only chance right now if you are an organization that's in india um to really go global and show folks what kind of innovation you do hackathon is a great platform for doing that and um, especially in the current pandemic uh, nothing stops you from getting people signed in virtually from any part of the earth right i hope that answered uh, the question uh, okay uh, and i'm moving on to another one so uh someone's asked what kind of questions or coding exercises are provided in hackathon so be she said you wanted to take that sure i mean again it, it's not the questions or the coding exercise right i mean typical hackathons are looking to solve business problems right so let me try and give you an example how do you intelligently match uh demand within an organization right you have let's say an organization like ey you have demand for particular skills in a particular business unit and you have some capacity in another business how do you intelligent i'm just throwing something off right how do you intelligently match that that could be a business problem and then if if that's the problem you open it out to the hackers to say this is what we want to solve and of this the matching engine is what we would like you to take a hack at so that's how it goes and then we kind of define what the technology stack is right you should be running it on a microsoft based technology these are things that you should be doing while you build the solution we give a broad guideline and then we leave it to the hackers to be able to go and kind of take a hack at it and and we've seen that teams come with variety of uh, solutions to it right they may be someone might be building an ai ml based solution to solve it someone could be building a data analytics based approach to it variety of approaches and then we pick up what is the best one as the teams to showcase what they've done so that's how you go it's not a coding exercise per se it's a business problem solved through technology most often there are other hackathons also way it's not tech focus it's a process oriented hackathon or or uh, and a multiple kind of hackathons happen today so i'm talking more from technology perspective but there are non tech hackathons also all right okay awesome uh, i'm going to move on to the next one uh, so another participant has asked how how would you manage the excitement and enthusiasm in participants how to make a hackathon a fun event rather than just another project that people are remotely working on especially with the increased fatigue and work from home and longer working so sanjay i think you wanted to take that question right yep i think uh, traditionally we would have seen these options like carrot rose and thread what is stick what you say right carrot as a tangible benefits rose as some award and stick as some threatening thing you can follow all those things that's not going to be fun Uh, gamification again it is there around the corner everybody follows the gamification part to do it but let me tell you a very serious note on this kind of uh, hackathon hackathon have become now mainstream solution it is a future of the technology companies how we service to the end customers so if you think in that manner and remove the seriousness about uh, it's like a coding competition and i have to win or something but it is more of a career building activity it is more of a team building in remote way in fact work from anywhere gives us opportunity to connect the team remotely my business analyst may be in delhi my front end developer may be in bangalore and my back end developer may be in pune and somebody may be in kolkata or kochi and bringing together or this is just not in any in india outside india also right and my design thinker may be in london Uh, so coming together those people and solving the problem if you take it more like a solving a problem in a fun way learning this for future career building point of view and whether you like or not this is must for survival of the next generation of the it industry so if you think in both way and take that as a fun way and not take pressure but take it more like a future of our career development in lighter way i think this is the greatest way to build that into i don't think any additional uh, thing needs to be looked into that is uh, the seriousness point of it is more about critical and do it fun way this is the best fun way to do it as a, a team hackathons what an interesting uh okay i'd like to move on to the next one and it's a very important question that i'm coming to uh, we spoke about this from a pre hackathon level but at from a post hackathon level so how how do you make sure that most of the solutions generated make it to product backlog how do you ensure that business buy in post hackathon happens it's a good question so bish i think you wanted to take that right sure i i think it it boils down to the level of business sponsorship that you have right the uh, how much 
uh, invested is the business in the whole uh, statement identification all the way through the hackathon and then the owners i think eventually is on the business team to be able to take that solution and then productionize it so that's why we say i mean you might have heard this from all the panelists that identification of the right business problem getting the right sponsorship is critical i think that that is the the must uh, do as to kick off a hackathon right so that's uh, essential once you have that i think uh, this is just a logical next step once you are with the hackathon you just take it into the next step Got it. But is there also just a quick follow-up? Is there anything specific that you need to kind of like you know, do to ensure that this moves into the product backlog, right? For example, right. Uh, maybe right at the starting stage itself, get the product teams involved and say that hey, we may have an idea that we need to implement, or at the end of it, maybe get the product team again involved and say hey, we've got a bunch of good solutions. Maybe you guys can help with the evaluation process, see what you want to take up, right? So how do you yeah. ensure this happens? Absolutely, uh, Alfred. That's a great point because you have to have all the right teams in the in the fray, right? You have to have your product team, your business team, your stakeholders, internal or external, whoever that is, is going to sponsor the product. All of them need to be involved right from the beginning, all the way through the hackathon. Otherwise, you just hack something, get a solution, it lies there in cold storage, right? No one is going to go back at it. So that's critical, as you said. All right teams need to be engaged from day one through the whole hacking process. Okay, got it, got it, interesting. All right, uh, we don't have a lot of time left for, uh, uh, for for a lot of questions. I think we've got around 18 odd questions that were asked. I hope we've answered quite a few, but I wanna bring a couple of questions to light. Uh, firstly is, I think Manu just asked this question saying, should a new startup go for hackathon for finding the next talent and to gauge interest in joining your idea to work together? Now, this is right at the conceptualizing stage, I'm sure, or very early startup stage. Uh, anyone wants to, uh, uh, like you know, take a pass. Ankur, yeah, go for it. So, so um, uh, given this was startup, and recently we concluded our open innovation contest. Um, you know, it was for them. It was not really getting into the area um, of joining the contest and and getting a talent pool. It was rather to take their their own pitch, their own organization to the next level. So, you got to decide uh, why are you doing this hackathon as a startup. One of the reasons could also be that the kind of solutions that you think is pretty innovative would be something that's already being used somewhere else. And uh, as a startup, your reach is going to be limited unless you increase your reach by doing these hackathons and getting people from, uh, from outside. It becomes a good sounding board for you um, to look at the kind of solutions that you have and you think is pretty innovative, um, tells you whether it is or it is not. And at the same time, um, of course, if you're looking at a talent pool, um, that's a good place to go and invest because the investment to a hackathon is not as much as the return is because through the return, there are a lot of solutions, uh, a lot of outcomes that gets generated that you can use and uh, takes a lot of, uh, takes away a lot of time. So as a startup, your focus is always on your business. And by doing these quick solution things um, kind of, you know, propels you again to the next level. Got it, got it. All right. Uh, okay. So maybe the last question, uh, and after this, I will quickly run through one or two other questions as well, which we just got, which I think I, I, I could answer them myself. But so someone has asked, how do you set up the lab and engineering discipline to ensure the right solution is built in a hackathon? Right. I think this is an extension to the previous question that we just had in terms of getting, pro like you know, adding this to the product backlog, but setting up the engineering discipline to ensure the solu right solution is built in the first place, that security is taken care of. How do you ensure that happens? And this is probably especially true when you have a crowdsourcing hackathon, right? When, it, when you're not just opening it up to your internal audience, but also to an external talent pool. How do you, how do, you do that? Uh, anyone wants to take a crack at that? Right, I think, I think the uh, key there, uh, Alfred and, and to whoever has asked the question is, you, you have to determine uh, uh, the technology stack that your organization is uh, engaged in, what kind of environment you want to provide to the hackers. So if you look at EY, EY being this the, the kind of an audit firm that we are we're very averse to technology, right? So we, we don't kind of provide the platform for the hackers. We let the hackers build it on their own platform and then we have an onboarding process to bring the solutions in-house. So depending on the organization, depending on the ecosystem within that organization, uh, you know, 
there are multiple approaches to take. So you might have a central team that will help you with all the environment. So the hackers are provided access, they can come and log in and uh, take a hack at it on premises or on a cloud kind of an environment with an organization. Or some organizations would let the hackers go about building it in the, on their own environments, right? You could have your own first mission, build it out there, or give you uh, environment through uh, partners like Hacker Earth. Hacker Earth, in fact, I'm sure you have a platform where you let the hackers go and take a stab at that using the platform, right? So there are multiple uh, methods to that. There's no one way this is the best way to do. So there are a variety of ways how you can uh, build the technology layer around that. So that's that's my view. And I hope that answered your question, uh, Subal. Anyway, so we're out of time for questions. Uh, I think uh, like we're already a couple of minutes over, over both, but I'm gonna quickly run through one or two questions which I can answer myself and then we'll end. Uh, so one of the questions that uh, came, are those questions provided by Hackathon, provided by maybe the Hackathon provider or a particular company has to create or design the complete coding question? Uh, you can choose to do it your way, right? I mean, the company can also choose to have the real world problem statements and the questions being set by yourself. The platform provider can also help, right? So from HackerIt, we do help in question setting as well. Yeah, so there's a lot of value from platforms. Is it possible to run an online hackathon without using pla platforms like HackerIt? If it's, if, you, if it's pure virtual that you're looking at, probably a little difficult. If it was pure on-site, I mean, even before the onset of platforms, on-site hackathons used to happen where everyone sat with their own systems, right? And then decide, and then kind of started coding. It's not the most practical of solutions, to be honest, but it is a solution that, uh, like, you know, it, it's, a, it's a hack, to be honest, right? It can work. But I would recommend if you want to go completely virtual, especially in today's world, a platform is a must, right? So especially the, the kind of flexibility and versatility that a platform gives to you, you can't get that same level when you just uh, do it the legacy way. Uh, all right, then, uh, okay, so, yeah, I've been told that, you know, we are completely out of time. I wish we had a lot more time to kind of discuss some of the other questions as well, but unfortunately we don't. Uh, in that note, we are gonna to have to end. Uh, and do not worry, I mean, as much as possible, we'll try and see if we can find answers to some of the questions that, you've, that you have put on the uh, question box, and we'll see if we can maybe uh, drop in those answers through the follow-up email that we inevitably going to have to all folks who attended the event. All right, so you've heard from the experts in terms of why you should be really doing a hackathon, how to do a hackathon, or how to conduct a hackathon in the first place, how you can get stakeholder buy-in, and all the different types of hackathons that uh, the panelists discussed about, starting all the way from hackathons that you do for talent branding to hackathons that you specifically undertake to foster a culture of innovation within your organization. Out of all that, right, here are re here's a reason or three reasons rather why you should do a hackathon with us, with Hacker Earth, right? Firstly, we've got unmatched expertise. As you can see, we've done over 4,000 hackathons with over 22,000 ideas that's come out of it and over 7,000 prototypes that were built. A lot of which was, which has been put into production as well. We've got a thriving global community of over 5.5 million developers across 133 countries with over 100 million code submissions that's done through our hackathons. And remember earlier in the conversation, I mentioned that conducting a hackathon was reasonably effortless or probably requires as much effort as maybe perhaps baking a cake. Well, you can actually manage hackathons completely self-serve by yourself through our platform that's called Sprint, or as you can see down here, you can let us do all the heavy lifting for you, right? We will help you manage the entire hackathon all the way from pre-launch to evaluation and analysis. Evaluation and analysis being one of the key challenges that a couple of our panelists highlighted earlier as well. Well, we can help you do that, right? So while the hackathon's running or after the hackathon's over, We'll help you get our team of our team of experts will help you analyze and understand exactly who needs to win. And all you need to do is sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, and watch us do the magic. Hackathons are just one component in the entire funnel. We will also help you assess, interview, and upskill talent like never before, all under one roof. So that your entire developer lifecycle management from pre-hire to 
post hire can be managed through Hacker Earth. No more fragmented processes, just Hacker Earth. All the way from your pre hire phase where you have hackathons and hiring challenges to internal hackathons where you're just essentially re engaging your hired candidates or hired developers. So that's just a snapshot of what Hacker can really help you with. We go a lot beyond hackathons. And in case you want to get started, not just with hackathons, but any of the solutions that you see on the slide, feel free to reach out to anyone at Hacker Earth or you can reach out to me directly at alfred at hackerworth.com and we'll ensure that we will help you get started as quickly as we possibly can. All right. Okay. So with that, we come to the end of our uh, India panel discussion, right? Uh, I just want to say a big, big thank you to all our panelists to begin with. Thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule and uh, making it making it for this panel discussion. I'm sure, well, I learned a lot, to be honest, from this discussion, and I'm sure the audience has as well. Thank, thank you so much, guys. Thank, thank you, Alfred. Thank you all there. Thank you. Thank you. thank you, everyone. Have a very wonderful evening. Bye. Bye.